They're successful entrepreneurs, fantastic cooks, and kind neighbors. On this week's World in America, we'll meet a thriving and close-knit community, the Ethiopian Americans. Join us to cheer on hard-hitting soccer athletes and dance Ethiopian style to songs by some of the country's hottest musicians. We'll sip freshly brewed coffee and sample injera, Ethiopia's ubiquitous bread. Coming up next on World in America. Located in the Eastern Horn of Africa, Ethiopia's unique heritage is evident to all those who study its history. Its lands have given birth to some of the world's oldest civilizations, and its origins date back to prehistoric times. Some claim that Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, was one of the points from which humans migrated throughout the world. Ethiopia is bordered by Eritrea to the north, Sudan to the west, Kenya to the south, Somalia to the east, and Djibouti to the northeast. Its diverse terrain creates wide variations in climate and conditions, and the Blue Nile River, considered by some to be holy, originates from Ethiopia's Lake Tana. Except for a brief occupation by Mussolini's Italy from 1936 to 1941, Ethiopia is the only African country never to have been colonized. Ethiopians are justly proud of that heritage. And although their history is long, it's also diverse. 84 indigenous languages are spoken in the country, and numerous ethnic groups exist. While the official language is Amharic, many Ethiopians also speak other local languages. English is the most common foreign tongue. Although Ethiopia has struggled with poor economic conditions, by far its most important export is its world-renowned coffee. According to legend, an Ethiopian goat herder named Kaldi was the first to discover the coffee plant. He awoke to find that his goats had eaten the ripe berries from the coffee bush, and as a result were frolicking around, seemingly dancing with excitement. Once Kaldi shared the beans with a monk in a nearby monastery, it is said that the practice of roasting coffee was born. That tradition continues today, and an Ethiopian coffee ceremony can last for hours. But paired with Ethiopia's delicious cuisine, rich with meats, lentils, and spicy vegetables served on injera bread, it makes for a wonderful meal to share with friends. When we return, we'll head to Washington, D.C. to see how recent immigrants have weathered their new life and hear how one organization has helped to support an entire Ethiopian-American community. Coming up on World in America. Welcome back to World in America. The Ethiopians were among the first Africans to voluntarily immigrate to the U.S. The first wave arrived in the 1970s and between 1982 and 1984. Ethiopians were the largest African group admitted into America. The Ethiopians start, uh, uh, you know, going out of the country, start, you know, migration uh, uh, during the regime of dark, during the military governments, and uh, fear of persecution. Ethiopians came to America to escape political repression, poor economic conditions, and widespread famine. There is no stable government in the country. It's, it's all about the political situation. Large populations settled in Los Angeles, Dallas, Houston, and Washington, D.C., which is home to the largest Ethiopian community in the country. People start going out of the country anywhere, you know, to save their life. But while life has been difficult in Ethiopia, some people also struggled with America's fast-paced and individualistic society. Integrating into American society was challenging. People, when they came from Ethiopian, the way we 
think about America as different from the reality America, the real America. And when it comes to it, there is a language barrier and vocational training. You know, all that is one of the factors for some of, I can say most Ethiopians is facing, you know, difficulties. Nothing is easy here. You have to work hard to survive in this country. Those Ethiopian Americans living in larger cities like Washington, D.C., were greatly assisted by community groups providing support networks and resources. In Washington, D.C., the Ethiopian Community Services and Development Council is the cornerstone of support for Ethiopian Americans. After a fire destroyed its former offices, the council decided to relocate near 9th and U Street Northwest in the heart of what some call Little Ethiopia due to its large concentration of more than two dozen Ethiopian businesses. While the name Little Ethiopia hasn't yet become official, the Council's new office helps establish the neighborhood's reputation as a gathering place for Ethiopian Americans. I was so thrilled to know that the Ethiopian Center was going to be here at 1901 9th Street. Someday, we are not people who give up, are we? Yeah. We will have this as Little Ethiopia yeah. in the District of Columbia. Yeah. And Daniel, you fit perfectly. Thank you. The Council provides cross-generational outreach, including job skills training and cultural programming. These services not only help immigrants enter into the workforce, they also help keep younger Ethiopians engaged with their heritage and provide a network of support. The parents should be able to understand their children need. And also at the same time, we don't want our children to forget their culture where they came from also. Some of the council's offerings include computer classes, ESL instruction, and general counseling to assist immigrants with successful integration into American life. They also offer hands-on vocational training, such as their unique dentistry program. We have dental program now, and we have the pharmacy section, we have a physician assistant program. With a rapidly growing Ethiopian American population in the D.C. area, the council services provide an invaluable resource to many in the community. The African immigrant is, is, is the fastest growing immigrant in the in Washington metropolitan area. This center, as you see, is very small compared to the need, compared to the demand. Our goal is to expand our services, not only here in Washington, but also in Virginia and Maryland at the same time, because there is a big number of people live in Maryland and Virginia. Relationships play a vital role for Ethiopian Americans, and family provides the backbone to build on. Because of the fast pace of American life, many families are juggling multiple roles as parents, spouses, entrepreneurs, and homemakers, all while establishing themselves in a new society. My name is Nubia. Um, Nubia Fasio is my last name. Um, I'm a mom, a wife. <laughs> a business owner, and I'm from Ethiopia. I do floral arrangements, and I own my own business. Um, we do floral designing for any occasion. I send flowers worldwide. Um, I'm a member of uh, Teleflora and uh, all the other wiring services. But being a minority and um, um, getting businesses done with big companies, corporate companies, uh, still is a challenge for us. But uh, I wouldn't complain because we have uh, a few clients that we dealt with. Uh, we do s some hotel works, uh, the new Washington Convention Center. We do floral arrangements for them. Because this is America, of course, we accommodate how to do our coffees and our daily um, lives, but we have a, a smaller stove next to the coffee ceremony. Just don't have to go back and forth to the kitchen to make the coffee, but uh, we didn't have that thing, so we just used this one. So when you have it at the ceremony, you just don't get up for like two hours. The ceremony takes place, so a lot of people were talking. 
that's the process. Back in Ethiopia, we interact with people almost like we have a more wider social life. Um, like one day you will have your sister's son birthday, the next day you're uh, as uh, somebody's wedding and a follow-up things. Um, if you look at it that way, through the social life, it's a whole lot different. Despite maintaining strong relationships, many people have been forced to adapt their social expectations to fit the American way of life. Back there, I mean, uh, anybody can just come to your house, even if you don't know them. You, we will invite them, we will welcome them in our house and offer them food and uh, drink and coffee, of course. That's a traditional uh, coffee making, which we do it like almost three times a day. Traditions and memories help maintain connection to one's native country, but there are still some things about home that can never be replaced. In Ethiopia, I mean, um, it's so beautiful. The weather is so beautiful almost every day. We do coffee ceremonies outside and uh, a whole lot of people would come together and we talk. And you see lots of greens, um, uh, animals. Those are the kind of things that I miss. Many Ethiopian Americans are now weathering the transition between the first generation of immigrants and their American-born children. I don't want him to lose his background. I want him to really know where he came from, uh, to have respect and to be able to know all of his cultures. And that's what I want him to be. With the help of their community, the kids can learn to live in a multicultural society. Language plays an important part in bridging those two worlds. Right now, he's, uh, he speaks a little, not speak, but he understands. So his first language is Amharic, of course, but when he goes to school, of course, you will learn English. He knows Tau, that means stop doing that. <laughs> and he knows um, I'm going to beat you, and he knows that he's going to get a little smack. Like many immigrants, the Ethiopian Americans see diversity and opportunity as the greatest gifts of their new home. America is a melting pot of nations. They come from all over the world. Uh, America is the next best place next to home. When we came here, we get to have a better life because we know how it takes for a person to have a three times a day meal. We have that here, but in some countries they don't even want for the third three day or so. So what I was, what I'm trying to say here is that um, America has a lot to offer for all of us if we take the opportunity. Coming up next on World in America, we'll savor some spicy Dora Watt, sip some freshly brewed coffee, and take a taste of injera. The delicious sourdough flatbread will also head to RFK Stadium for some hard-hitting soccer action and music by the world's most famous Ethiopian performers, all at one of North America's largest Ethiopian festivals. All this and more when we return. Welcome back to World in America. Ethiopian cuisine is delicious, satisfying, and a culinary experience all its own. A variety of spicy meat and vegetable stews called wat are served atop a sourdough flatbread called injera. Not only is the injera a delicious bread accompaniment, it functions as a utensil as well and is used to pick up bites of the different dishes. At most traditional Ethiopian restaurants, you'll find low chairs surrounding a circular table on which one round plate serves a meal shared by all. Though these may seem like small portions, the meal is surprisingly filling and addictive too. Hi, I'm Terence Richards uh, from West Orange, New Jersey, owner operator of Harar Ethiopian Cafe in South Orange. Okay, my name is Lulit Mamong. I'm from uh, Ethiopia. Food brings people together, in some cases quite literally. This husband and wife team built Harar Cafe into a thriving business and built a relationship as well. 
after first meeting over a meal to discuss their new venture. The name Harar uh, comes from the ancient city of Harar in eastern uh, central Ethiopia. This restaurant came to be uh, on a chance that my wife and I met uh, before we were married, obviously, uh, and it was a coffee and tea house, and we got together to bring out the exotic flavors of Ethiopia and bring the food to the forefront, uh, thus Harar Cafe. Our restaurant, the Harar Cafe, is an Ethiopian cuisine restaurant uh, located in the village of South Orange Village Township uh, here in northern New Jersey and we have a seating capacity of approximately 40 people and we offer authentic Ethiopian cuisine uh, in that uh, our cuisine is just as you would get it if you were in Ethiopia. The coffee ceremony is one of the most important parts of an Ethiopian meal. And don't expect a quick sip of coffee from a to-go cup. This ritual can last for an hour or more. But the time is worth it. Green coffee beans are freshly roasted over a fire and then ground with a mortar and pestle. The coffee powder is then placed in a black pot called a jabina, mixed with water, brewed for the proper length of time, and then served hot at the table. Throughout, friends have the opportunity to continue a lively conversation while waiting for a warm end to a delicious meal. Most of, uh, from most of the food, I want to mention about two of them because one is vegetarian, we call it bayainatu, and the other one is dorowat, that means chicken leg. The vegetarian is when we are fasting for Easter, we have to fast for two months. So at that time, every Ethiopian eat only vegetarian food. Then after two months, when we finish fasting, the dorowat is the first one everybody make to eat the, I mean, the transaction from vegetarian to meat. Ethiopian cuisine is heavy on beef, lamb, and chicken, uh, but also on vegetables. Uh, the country is uh, pretty much split uh, Muslim and Christian, and a lot of the days are observed uh, for not eating meat, so uh, we have a large vegetarian selection, so the, the menu is pretty varied. Here we have typical Ethiopian dishes. Uh, in particular, we have azifa, which is lentil uh, salad, cold lentil salad, which has a green chili pepper and onion uh, with uh, olive oil and some other seasonings. We have sambusa, which are filled with potato and lentil. Three or, or four main dishes of Ethiopian cuisine are, one would be one called dorowat, and doro is an Amharic translation for chicken. Uh, another would be kitfu. Uh, kitfu is usually served raw beef or beef tartare. Uh, and then there's a segawat, which is a beef stewed dish. And then beyayanetu, which is a combination of vegetables. Uh, those are, would come to mind when I think of Ethiopian cuisine. And then in the center we have a platter of the traditional beyayanetu vegetarian selection where we have split pea or atkilt, we have gomen, which is the collard green, the red is the lentil, which is called miser, and we have atkilt, uh, wat, cabbage, carrot, and potato. Ethiopia is a more conservative uh, society, and whenever I try to change something or alter something, my wife gives me a stern no and says it's authentic Ethiopian cuisine and has to be this way. In the background, we have dorowat uh, with an egg, which is chicken. It's a more festive uh, dish that is eaten. And then we have uh, yabeti tips, which is a traditional everyday dish of uh, beef uh, sautéed with onions, tomato, and green pepper. We want to offer authentic Ethiopian cuisine for uh, people in America to really taste what Ethiopia has to offer. And two, because the uh, society is very traditional society, they like to keep things unaltered uh, from any type of outside influence and do it the way they've done it for centuries. After the meal uh, is consumed with the injera, which is the staple of Ethiopia, and which uh, the injera is used as the utensil as well as a uh, starch, 
in which you pick up each particular item that you want and then you just eat that uh, portion before you go on. Once the full meal is finished, then as you uh, were told and saw, the coffee is enjoyed uh, during the coffee ceremony. And that's the traditional Ethiopian meal. Food, music, dancing, vendors, and lively soccer matches. This Ethiopian festival offers all that and more for thousands of Ethiopian Americans. It's the 25th anniversary of the annual sports and cultural event sponsored by the Ethiopian Sport Federation in North America, held this year at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. Also known as ESFNA, the organization pulls together some of Ethiopia's finest players and musicians for a week full of fun, Ethiopian style. This is our 25th year. Each year we select a city where, the, where there's a good number of Ethiopian community and go there for one week and have the celebration. We have 27 teams in this league, uh, 26 from the United States and one from to Toronto, Canada. We've been to Canada twice for this kind of festival. And uh, as you can see, this is just a, a love fest. That's what I call it. Ethiopia prides itself on its many fine athletes particularly its long and short distance runners who have excelled in professional competitions around the world. But while Ethiopia's soccer team may not hold such a stellar record, the sport nonetheless draws die-hard fans and an international following. ESFNA hosts the largest African soccer tournament in North America, and the enthusiasm is evident here at the stadium. For Ethiopians living abroad, this event is one of the highlights of the year. Well, we have a festival. We have it uh, every year. Uh, it's a soccer tournament. Uh, we have uh, players from every state. They come to play to, uh, to match up and see who wins. And then in that event, we have uh, all these uh, retail uh, outlets that come and bring their products and they, they show what they, what they have. Okay, my name is Lapona and um, I'm here for the soccer games, the Ethiopian soccer tournament. It happens every year. Um, usually it's in a different state every year and um, everyone from all over the country and even sometimes from the country Ethiopia itself they come here to make, mingle with everyone and you know um, to just have a good time. Basically here it's not just the soccer games you come here you visit you see people you haven't seen in years I mean it's it's good to come together and see what big of an influence what big of an impact Ethiopians have here in this country. As if soccer and food weren't enough, festival goers can wander among the many colorful booths where Ethiopian vendors from around the country sell everything from traditional dress to ethnic art. And it's not just fun for the attendees. This event offers a great opportunity for artisans to get to know each other and market their work to a wider audience. Community service organizations are also represented with the goal of introducing their projects and networking with others interested in their cause. My name is Ababa Fakade. I'm one of the organizer and the co-founder of International Ethiopian Women's Organization. I'm here today. I, unfortunately, the weather is about to rain, but today is, the, I believe, the fifth day of the Ethiopian Soccer Federation activity here in Washington, D.C., the 25th year's anniversary. And I'm here today because of this custom. It's called Ethiopian Day. It's about uh, 10 minutes, there's going to be a big show inside the stadium about different cultural shows like Skista. There's uh, soccer being played there and today later on in about an hour we, call, we have a day what we call Ethiopian Day which is music celebration over 40 art artists will perform uh, the, throughout the night. We, we'll be lucky if we leave by midnight today. Famous Ethiopian performers such as Tilahun Jasise, Mahmoud Ahmed, Kuku Sebsibe, Gosaye, and Mike E all grace the stage to get the crowd dancing. Ethiopian music has a distinct style and rhythm, and elements of Afro pop, reggae, and hip hop mingle with traditional instruments to create unique contemporary sounds.
larger portion of this crowd is Ethiopian Americans. I myself have two children that are t teenagers and they will never miss this. They love it. ESFNA's festival brings friends and families from around the country together for a celebration of entertainment, sports, and culture. With such widespread dedication to preserving and sharing their heritage, it's no wonder the Ethiopian-American community continues to thrive. <laughs>